So we're going to go today. We know that the power of being grateful, we know how prominent that power can be in our, in our souls, but sometimes it's hard to remember to give thanks. Sometimes it's hard to remember to thank the people um, that help you get to where you're going. And a lot of times you forget the people and the circumstances in your life for the blessings and the opportunities that they give you. But more importantly, a lot of people forget to thank God. Um, something good happens in their life. They get opportunities. They get to do this or they get to do that. They get a promotion. They get a new house. They get a new car. They get a new wife. Um, not her. I've had her for a while. It's the other one. It's, it's the other wife I used to have. Not, not that one. So are those called future ex-wives or are they called eternity wives? Oh, yeah, eternity wise. But it is sometimes we, we just sit and we think about, oh, we're going to go do this. And, and I'm talking about all of us going to Nashville right now. And, man, we're on so many formats right now. The, the gospel is getting reached. So many people through five, starting March 2nd, today we're on three different television networks. Um, when we come back from Nashville, we'll be on four different television networks. On March the 4th, we're on five different television networks. The total possible, the possible viewing audience on those five networks is over 175 million people. Out of this little church with what you guys are doing. Now, what we know for a fact is, by numbers, and this is, this is a fact, we are heard and seen every Sunday by almost 2 million people. That is a blessing from God. It's not, it's not anything anybody individually do, has done. It's what this church and this church family has done collectively. It's the unit of the church that promotes God. But the thing is, I know for me, I've never lost the fact that everything that happens is a blessing. Um, and I know where the blessing comes from. Every opportunity comes. It comes from man, but God has given that opportunity to man to give to us. Never forget where the opportunities come from, but never forget where it came from. It came from God. And be grateful for that. Because we get so wrapped up in our lives through the hardships and the trial, challenges and struggles that we get lost in a sea of doom and sometimes in our lives we can't see what tomorrow brings because we're too busy sitting on the pity pot for today. Um, there's so many things in everybody's life that you look back on and you go, how did I make it? And a good example, and, and nothing that I'm saying this morning is braggadocious to me at all, but a year ago, man, I was just smothering in debt, you know, just going here, going there, and then the opportunity started coming. The opportunity started coming. The opportunity started coming. I can honestly say, because of God, putting the opportunities in front, but going after the opportunity and seizing what God's blessing was, within two weeks, I'm going to be completely debt-free. I'm not going to owe anything to anybody or anything. No mortgages, no house payments, no car payments, no individuals. And that's all because of God. Because he allows that and those things to happen. And we should always be grateful for, for all of those things. Because I don't want to be indebted to man. All of my debt is God's. You know, I'm, I'm indebted to God for life because of what he's done. And I want everyone to feel that way. That no matter how bad it seems right now, it doesn't have to be there tomorrow. And no matter how bad you feel today, you don't have to feel that way to, to, for the remainder of the day and tomorrow. And we all come into circumstances. I know I had a talk with Jen and told her something today she didn't know. I thought she knew, and I hope it uplifted you. Um, it, it's When you feel like that you're at wit's head and there's nowhere else to turn to, we've always had someone to turn to. And that someone has always been God. Now, it's up to us. I said three Sundays ago about the best way to get a blessing from God is to put a smile on God's face. 
Give God something unexpected that he's not expecting from you. Give it to him. And a lot of that could even just be prayer. Because a lot of people don't pray daily. A lot of people, and I find this difficult to believe, um, a lot of people don't say grace when they eat their food. Um, that, to me, is just a no-brainer, easy, just, just as quick as thank you, Lord, for the food, and then eat. Just three seconds. It's kind of like in the school system. We can't say the Pledge of Allegiance anymore in schools because they say it's too time-consuming. But if, if we all stood up and did the Pledge of Allegiance, do you know what's under 10 seconds? Is God worth 10 seconds of your time a day for a prayer? You shouldn't be talking. Austin? She's got laryngitis. So she, I, I can't hear you say it louder. Wait, wait, louder? <laughs> well, I think that's great, and, and I do. But we, we've always got to know where our blessings come from. But here's another important thing. We can't ever um, feel comfortable with the blessings that we get. We always got to want to try to promote more blessings. And we got to try to take that one blessing and make it into a multitude of blessings. So I got blessed with the Nashville stuff, so I bless, hopefully, other people. Those other people, I hope, are blessing other people. The Bible teaches us that, that King David found favor with God through his music and his harp, his poems. But not only that, because of the, the soundness and the purity of his heart when he repented, King David, when he repented, would cry a river um, out of repentance, out of sorrow for how he hurt God. So every time that you do something, every time um, something negative comes into your life, don't blame God, praise God for getting you out of that because you're going to get out of it. When something positive happens, don't make God a doormat that you don't need him because everything's going well. It's going well because he put you in that position. Thank him for the good times, but also thank him for the bad times because he's going to get you out of it. And then you're going to be able to stand up one day and give a testimony on how God rescued you out of poverty or sadness or sickness or death in the family. You'll be able to stand up and say, well, this is why God used me this way. And then be grateful to it. So we're going to go right into Scripture. Uh, Thessalonians 5, 16, 18 says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So the good news about that scripture is that God wants you to be happy. God wants you to pray to him and always to be thankful for all the blessings in your life. And, and that says give thanks in all circumstances. So what I just said was, okay, things aren't working out the way that they should today. But it doesn't mean by the time you walk out those doors, a turn in your life hasn't happened, and then you can see the proverbial light when you walk out that door. Spread that grace that God's given you to somebody else. Spread that blessing to somebody else and give them that golden key to the kingdom that you have through your praise, worship, and glorifying of an almighty God, right? So always be thankful and never forget where the blessings come from. But always remember to pass them on to somebody else because God loves a giver. God absolutely loves a giver. So can I pass the collection plate again three more times? Like, no? Okay. <laughs> I try. 2 Corinthians 4.15. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. The good news is, if more people are thankful to God, listen to this, he will be even more glorious to all of us. So the more that we can thank God, and the more that we can praise him, and the more that we can glorify him, the more God likes it. Remember, the Bible teaches us that God is a jealous God. He likes the unexpected in a good way. He likes the joy and the laughter. God likes it when you put a smile on his face for things that you've done for him. And in return, he gives you blessings that you weren't expected. 
But, but here's my problem with getting an unexpected blessing. I don't believe in unexpected blessings. Because when I get a blessing, I expected it because I'm loyal to God. Because He teaches us if we honor His covenant, we'll be blessed. So why be surprised when you get blessed? It just means you're doing the dang thing. And God's happy with you. Amen? It just means that you're doing the right thing. Don't be surprised when blessings come your way. Expect them to come your way because of your loyalty to God. Amen? Colossians 3.15 Let the grace of Christ rule in your heart since as members of one body you are called to peace and to be thankful. Now the good news about this is there are two traits of, that, that um, all Christians should have. One is their hearts should be at peace. You should be able to wake up in the morning and look at yourself in the mirror and go, I'm a good person. I've not done anything to jeopardize anybody else's well-being. I haven't said anything to them to de deter them. I, all I've done was to uplift and help people. If you can look in the mirror and say, okay, I haven't done anything to negatively affect someone's life, but I've done a whole lot to try to glorify God and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you can look in the mirror and do those, you're doing a pretty daggum good thing to God, amen? The other thing is, you should always have gratitude towards God. And this sermon this morning is about gratitude to God. We should always be grateful that no matter what we have and what little sometimes we have, we should be grateful to God that he gave it to us. And I've told this story many times. You know, uh, when Cindy and I first were married, we lived in a, a house that didn't have a refrigerator, literally. We couldn't afford to go buy one. We had a cooler that we put ice in and hoped that it stayed cold. We had zero meat because we couldn't buy it. We were living on canned green beans because we got them on sale. And we were fishing in a pond that was on the property for our food. We ate fish and we ate green beans for about three months until God decided that he was going to bless us because we never complained. We, ate, we fished, we cleaned them, we ate them. And we ate them two days a week or two days, two times a day for about three months. Is that correct, Cindy? And that's all we ate. Green beans, crappie, bluegill, and catfish. That was it. We didn't have a refrigerator. We couldn't buy milk. We couldn't, nothing. But God sustained us. And he gave us a, a thing in our heart to be more appreciative of the first time that we were able to go to the store and buy a rotisserie chicken. Remember Cindy telling me, she goes, you know how many times I went to the baking section of the store and I saw that a cake was a dollar and a quarter and we didn't have it. She wanted to bake a cake. We couldn't afford the dollar twenty-five for her to buy the cake mix. Because I quit my job to serve an almighty God. And I knew all those years ago that God was going to make it so that I would be here today doing what I do today to glorify him. So you are going to go through times where it's not easy, but we never cursed God. We never said, why us? We never said anything to that effect. We just knew that a better day was coming as long as we stayed on course with him. And better days are here, and they're going to stay here. Amen? So don't get discouraged. Ride out the storm, like REO Speedwagon would say. Ride in the storm now. Waiting for the thaw out. Right out the storm. Because better. Why are you shaking your head at me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lindsay can't talk. Lindsay, you're being replaced in the band because you can't talk. Meet your new replacement. Linda, what's your last name? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, also meet your new backup singer. <laughs> Oh, I love my job. <laughs> Philippians 4, 6, 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. 
And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, the good news about that scripture is, is rather than praying when we're worried about a specific situation, make sure to pray constantly so that you're blessed every day so that thing that you would have been worried about isn't even there to be worried about. You prayed it away before it happened. You gave God the glory and you prayed that nothing negative would happen in your life or to your family's life. And if you do that, and here's the thing, people pray every day. That's just a fact, Jack. They pray. But a lot of people pray just to pray. And if you're praying just to pray, that's not a sincere prayer to God. God knows that you're doing it just to do it. You've got to mean it when you pray. You've got to know that God is holy when you pray. You've got to know that He is the answer of all questions when you pray. You've got to know that God makes the impossible possible when you pr pray with a pure heart. You've got to know that when God's on your side, nothing else matters. Lindsay, you could wake up tomorrow morning with a fresh throat. Just pray it. It wouldn't be unheard of. It would be expected to somebody that has complete faith in God. I'll go back to this scripture. The woman bled for 12 years, spent every penny she had on doctors. Nothing happened. She tucked the touched the cloak of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Instantly, he felt the power leave him. He turned around and said, who touched me? The woman said, I. Jesus turned to her and he said, Benny Hinn healed you. No, he didn't say. He said, Joyce Meyer healed. No, he didn't say that one either. Jesse du Jesse Dupl Woman, your faith healed you. Your faith healed you. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't pray in a group. There's more power in faithful prayer in a group. But your faith can move mountains. The Bible tells us it can move mountains. The Bible says that the faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. Have that kind of faith. Let your faith determine where you go in life. Don't rely on somebody else to pray it for you. Pray it yourself. I can't pray you to heaven. Jeff can't pray Teresa to heaven. But we certainly can get them close enough that they want to pray themselves to get to the golden gates. Amen? 1 Chronicles 16, 34. Give thanks for the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. The good news about that is that God's love is the only thing that will last forever. Friends come and go. Family comes and goes. Poverty comes and goes. Wealth comes and goes. Smiles come and go. Heartbreak comes and goes. But the love that God has for us Christians, C word, us Christians, that is an eternal love. Because once we get to the kingdom, we're there forever. God's love is forever to the true believer. That's why it's so important to us as a church, as a congregation, and as an audience to go reach out to as many people as you can to try to get them to know what we know and that there is no other way except through the way through Christ. And as Billy Graham says, there's only one way, and that way is to the cross. Get to the cross. Get splinters in your hands from hugging the daggone thing. Have your wife or husband have to pluck them out because you've been hugging and crying and weeping and praying over what Jesus went through so that we could be grateful and gracious for the lives that we have today. Amen? Psalms 9.1 I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell all of your wonderful deeds. The good news about that scripture, it's always be thankful of the things you have and make sure that everyone else knows you have them, not because of what you did, but because of the mercy that God gave you and the blessing that God gave you to have them. Because if it wasn't for God's grace and his mercy and his blessing on your life, you wouldn't have the blessings that you have today. And that is just the way it is. There's really nothing else to be said about that scripture. Psalms 95, 2, 3. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God, the great King, 
of all gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. The good news, things you have in your life are all thanks to God. Make sure to thank and celebrate Him. Again, this says, um, let's come before Him with thanksgiving and assault Him with music and song. The next verse that I'm going to do is Psalm 6930. It says, I will praise God's name in song and glorify Him with thanksgiving. So, Every time you thank him for everything he's done for you, bring more glory to his name. If all of the Christian bands that are eh, eh, Christian bands would actually be eh, eh, Christian bands, we'd be a lot better society. If you claim it, live it. If you live it, then claim it. The old saying is, you can walk the walk, but you can't talk to talk. You're influencing con- gospel artists throughout the world are influencing especially younger people now, they're really into gospel music more than they ever have been. It's up to these gospel groups and these gospel artists to lead by an example. And the reason why I put these two scriptures is there's a very famous gospel artist that you can read. I'm not going to mention them by name because they don't deserve it. In Atlanta, and they've sold millions and millions and millions of records. They've won Dove Awards. Just to come to find out that the lead singer's got two kid, other kids out of marriage with two other people, and now he's getting ready to go into rehab for uh, drug and alcohol addiction. But the problem with that is congratulations for going into drug and alcohol re- uh, addiction. But the funny thing is, what happens to a lot of people when they get caught? Well, it, it's, I didn't tell you this, but I've got a drug problem. You shouldn't be praised singing about a God that if you believed in him, you wouldn't have that wandering eye, that you wouldn't be doing this to your vein, that you wouldn't be putting this to your lips. You should be praising that God and being an example for all those other people because you live the life that Christ put you here to live. He didn't put you here. It's like pastors, the other pastor in Atlanta, several years back, about 10 years ago, gave AIDS to five female members of his congregation. Five. He didn't almost give them AIDS. They tested positive for it after they had an affair with him. Five. He went into rehab for whatever reason, and they hired him back. No, no, Lucy. That's not serving God. 2 Corinthians 2.14, but thanks be to God who always lead us as captives in Christ's triumphal progression and used to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. One of the missions in life is to spread the word of God and to help others see that there is glory in his name. Um, I've told you before, I'm not a pastor. I, I've never been a pastor. I will never be a pastor. I'm an evangelist. There is a difference. I pastor a church, but I am an evangelist. The Bible teaches us that we should go spread the word. And he's not just talking about me because I get up here on Sunday. He's talking about you. He's talking about everybody that's in this church right now. When you leave this church, according to the Apostle Paul, you're equipped to go out and start spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you should, the correct way. You should leave here today and spread the good news about a Christ that is not dead, a Christ that is risen and walking amongst us today, a Christ that I am banking my life on is real because I know he is, and I'm betting my life on that. Amen? Colossians 3, 16, 17. Let the message of Christ, Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with the wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs, from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude with your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Always make sure to keep God's Word in your heart, especially when you're spreading His words through song or His teachings to others. It's like a school teacher. It's like a school teacher. If you go to school and a teacher teaches you something wrong about the Civil War, and then you take a test and you flunk that test based on what she told you, 
taught you. That's the teacher's fault for teaching you wrong. It's the same thing with pastors, musicians, singers, and, and members of the body of Christ. If you go out and teach a wrong doctrine, whose fault is it that these people have learned the wrong doctrine? It's ours. And it's yours. And it's yours. <laughs> I don't know about you, Mitch. Charlie, you ever met Mitch? <laughs> hey, Mitch. Two ex-cops. You got to love church, don't you? Psalms 107.1. Oh, give thanks to, to the Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. God loves you, and for that you should be thankful. I think that's the most important thing. I think once you decide, and, and it's a decision that you have to make. Decide this. Today I've decided that I'm good enough for God. Today I've decided that He died on that cross for me, personally. Today I've decided that I'm going to put a smile on God's face. Because I know that that's where my blessings come from. My blessing will never come from man. My blessing will always come from God. Now God uses people, men, women... To, to bring that blessing to you, but you always have to understand that blessing is originated from the greatest originator of them all, an almighty God who claims to be the Alpha and the Omega, the first, the last, the ever, never ending. That's God. He is all of it. He's the whole enchilada. He's even the little red cheese that's on the sauce that's on top of the enchilada. He's all of it. Because He loves us that much that He's given us the opportunity every single day, seven days a week, to change our lives, turn our lives. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter what we did. It literally doesn't matter what your past is. Because God says if you pray with a repentant heart that you're forgiven. I've said this a million times, probably a thousand. It says that, and, and, I, and I say this because it's just something I made up about 15 years ago. But... God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, but he, he actually gave Moses a greater gift with those Ten Commandments than just the Ten Commandments. Are you aware of that? He never put a number behind them. He never said that if Charlie breaks the, the, the Fifth Commandment 50 times, I'm not going to forgive, forgive you. You know, 50 is the limit on this commandment. He doesn't say that if you break the Sixth Commandment 100 times, there's a limit on that. After the 100th time, I'm not forgiving you. God never put a number behind the commandments because He knows we're human. He knows that we're at fault. He knows that we're weak. He knows that we needed that. He knows that we need to know that regardless of how many times we've done something, that He is willing to forgive us and forget it if it's with a pure heart. But you have to be willing to change. If you can't change all of it, don't do any of it. Because with God... God is an all-or-nothing God. He wants all of your attention. He wants all of your praise. He wants all of your glory. And guess what He's going to give us? All He's got. That's pretty special now, isn't it? Could you imagine if God sat at your table today and had a conversation with you and said, you know what, you made me smile. I know where your heart is. I know you're going to do better. So from this point forward, I'm going to give you my all. Sheesh. I'd love to be part of that conversation, wouldn't you? Let's go to Ephesians 5.20. Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is generous, and He blesses all of His children equally, thanking Him for being in His good graces. God is an equal opportunity God. 
He doesn't go because you're black, I'm not blessing you. He doesn't go because you're white, I'm not blessing you. Because you're Asian, I'm not blessing you. He doesn't look at where you live and go, you live over here behind the tracks. I'm not blessing people that live over there. They didn't work hard enough to get over here. He doesn't look at your bank account and say, ooh, look how much you got. I'm going to bless you. And then look at the poor man and go, I'm not going to bless you. He blesses everybody equally. No exception. God will bless you according to how you treat him. According to how you put Jesus on the pedestal that he deserves. That's how your blessings will flow. That's how prosperity comes. That's how your healings come. And that's how your life changes. And here's the thing with God. You ready for this one? I know people don't believe this, but believe this. The first time that you make God smile for doing something unexpectedly for him. I know people think that God takes a long time to answer prayers. That quick. It can be just that quick. Because guess what? Huh? Yes, it is. Sometimes the answer is no. But he will answer one way or another. He will give you that answer. You just have to listen to it. And a lot of times God does answer no. We don't want to take no for an answer and do it anyways. That's what messes up your life. You wait for God. You wait for God. You wait for God. He finally answers, and it's not the answer you want. I love those. It's not the answer that you want. So you do it anyways. You start leading your life the way that you want it. And then you find out you're still in that same old trap of life. And then you got to go back to God and go, hey, God, sorry about that, buddy. You know, I should have listened to you in the first place. And you better hope that you do it with a repentant heart. Amen? James 1.17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation of shadow due to change. The good news about that scripture is always remember that everything you have is because of God. And don't turn to sin to get what you want. Wait for God to answer you. And then you will get more abundantly than what you wanted for. Don't let life beat you down. Don't let life hurry you up. That's what's wrong with the world today. People get so consumed with having to be a part of something. Oh, I want to be a part of this protest. I want to be a part of that protest. I want to be this group. I want to be in that group. I want to be seen. I want to Listen, I want to be part of God's group. You know, I just, I just want God to look down on me and say, you're doing okay, old man in a cowboy hat. Old cat in a cowboy hat. I want God to look down on this church and go, you're changing the world. You're changing the world. I don't want God to look down on us and go, bunch of hypocrites in there. I'm not going to bless that thing. I want everybody in here to know who God is, what he's capable of, and how quickly he's capable of it. Because he will turn a negative into a positive as soon as we could blink. Because he's God. 2 Corinthians 9.15 Thanks be to God for his in, inexpressible gift. God doesn't provide material things. You can, through your hard work, through the blessing that God gives you. God gives us love abundantly. One of the greatest things that, that God gives us is knowledge. Knowledge, how to live our lives the correct way according to his will, to better our lives and to prosper ourselves. God gives us knowledge right? The next thing God gives us, which is one of the most important things you could ever have, hope. God gives us hope. When you seem like there's nothing good going, when you think that you're at the end of your rope, even people when they think they're going to lose their lives. I talked to a guy that said he was going to commit suicide 10 years ago. He's now a pastor. He said one of the greatest things he ever did was he called a suicide hotline. And he talked to the people, and they gave him a scripture. He promised to read the scripture. He read the scripture, then ended up reading the whole book, and then decided he's going to try this God thing for a little while. He said if he would have pulled that trigger 10 years ago, he knows that he would be in hell today. But now he knows that his life was meant to be in that direction at that time to go out and teach other people. You don't need to take your life. Jesus gave his life already. You need to live for him. 
And you need to go out and try to change other people's lives. See, when you think that there's hope, there is no hope. There is hope. We have to be the voice of the voiceless. We have to be this generation's leaders for the next generation so they don't have it as bad as we have it. With all these wars and all these riots and and all this racism and reverse racism and Republican and Democrat. And we don't need any of this, especially inside of a church. We need more God inside of a church. We don't need anything other than the Lamb. Colossians 4.2, continually, steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Prayer should not be rushed, but a process that will show you, that will show God your devotion to him. If you're in a room and somebody's telling you, come on, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. What's more important, the got to go or God? If you're in prayer, never let anybody rush you out of that prayer because that is the one time where you're absolutely intimate with the creator. You're absolutely one-on-one with the big guy. He called your cell phone and you hit accept instead of uh, decline. It's your time with God. And the only direct line that you can have with God is on your knees, and he will answer every single time. You just have to make that call. Amen? I'm going to finish this up. 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you to belong in Christ Jesus. No matter what, have gratitude in your hearts at all times. That's what God intends for us to do because he loves us so much. God does not want anybody down here on earth crying. He doesn't want a child hurt. He doesn't want these, this planet to be at war with each other. He doesn't want all of this neglect of the children. God does not want those things. But here's the thing. God is not doing it. Man is. Don't blame God for a war that man created. Pray to God that he touches the soul of those men and they get to know him so that all of these wars stop. This sex trafficking stops. All this drug abuse stops. That men, women, and children get along together regardless of who they were. Let them be who they want to be regardless of dwelling up their past and making them feel shameful about themselves and not wanting to move forward in a prosperous life that glorifies God. We've got to stand up, and and I've said this before, and I I know we got some people back there. I am not an advocate of anybody standing up in any kind of a meeting saying, Hi, I'm Joe. I'm a recovering alcoholic. Look, I know it makes you feel better. I think those classes are needed, and I do think they're needed. But if I'm a Christian man, and I live by... And I've prayed by 2 Corinthians 5.17 that says that if I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I'm a new creation, a new creature. The old in me is gone and the new in me is born. I am not standing up before any man and saying that I was addicted to anything. I'm just plain Joe the Christian at that point. And I'm going to use what happened to me to praise God for letting me overcome a tragic story and a tragic situation in my life. Should you go out and help other people? Yes. Should you be around like-minded people to help them? Yes. But by God, if God's in your life, and you've accepted Him, you're not a recovering anything. You're just God's. See ya. And if God was here, He would say...